He's the, he's the comedic equivalent of the World War II Jews selling the other ones out. They're in the attic! <laughs> I saw them come down to put the figure in the porridge! Here is my question today. Am I the only one who sees, before we get to the Seth Rogen clips, am I the only one who sees that not only is this we've talked about, the first generation fighting for less rights and less freedom, but this is the first generation of comedians actively endorsing leaders who create speech laws. Does anyone else see this as uncharted territory? It is, I am, so unbelievably concerned, I don't even necessarily know how to put it to words. Let's just, let's take a look more recently on The Ellen Show, how Seth Rogen just fawns over noted put chief Justin Trudeau. Canada owns a house in, uh, in Hancock Park. It's lovely, I'd never been invited there before, and then they invited me, and, and Justin Trudeau was there. He just showed up and was like, I'm gonna try to talk to everybody, <laughs> and just walked around. And, wow. And he was super handsome. He seemed genuinely happy. Yeah. He's quite an amazing guy. Well, you seem to, to be very impressed by him, so much so that you cut your wife out of the picture, because I saw the... <laughs> That's the picture. Isn't he amazing, that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau? Amazing enough to actively support anti-free speech laws under the guise of hate speech laws like Bill C-16, which was passed. Of course, you know this because Jordan Peterson criticized it for its compulsion, its compelling speech. And uh, the faculty at Wilfrid Laurier Uni told Lindsay Shepard, she was on the show, we had her on with Jordan Peterson. Yeah. Remember they met? That she may have violated it just by playing a Jordan Peterson clip. This is the kind of policy that this amazing Trudeau supports. Trudeau's administration is now actually looking at bringing back an even broader anti-free speech law that he previously, uh, it was, he didn't, it was previously repealed. It would encompass online speech as well. It's almost like the first one was just a gateway. It's almost like it was just a gateway. <laughs> By the way, hit the bell notification if you're subscribed on YouTube because that doesn't mean anything anymore if you want to actually be notified of the videos, especially because they could be removed imminently. Uh, other examples, comedian Mike Ward, we've had him on the show. He was put before a Canadian Human Rights Tribunal fined $42,000 for an offensive joke. For a joke? <laughs> Liberals support us. The party of Justin Trudeau. Comic Guy Earl was also fined $15,000 for joking about lesbians who were heckling him in the audience. That's insane. Think about how crazy this is. Seth Rogen supports the guy who actively supports and campaigns for this. He's the, he's the comedic equivalent of the World War II Jews selling the other ones out. They're in the attic! <laughs> I saw them come down to put the figure in the porridge! We're off duty! You're so fast! You're so fast with the snitching! You guys would be the last people on the earth protecting free speech. If anybody else would, it's comedians. You have to. You, well, you have to. But people like Seth Rogen and Amy Schumer and Trevor Noah, they're the leaders of, of comedy right now. That's what's so scary. This is, this is totally uncharted territory. Can you imagine what comedy will look like 15 years from now? <laughs> you know what's funny? about feminism, absolutely nothing. Because rape culture is real. Now, in case there were any doubt uh, as to the incessant, unwarranted fanboy worship. <laughs> he hugged me, which is weird. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, no, he and looks very happy to be weird. with you. He seemed genuinely happy, and yeah. I felt his muscles like because press it, into my body, gone. like like displacement, like the amount of space his muscles took up, my body kind of just <laughs> deflated, smeared out yeah. of the way <laughs> to make room for it, like wow. when a boat goes in the water. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> It was quite a feeling. Oh, you blew it! It's the point. <laughs> Justin Trudeau's <laughs> going, ah, oh, crap. He's like, don't know if you're gonna compliment. Don't, don't. <laughs> not, not, with the, it. not with the physique. <laughs> they have got nice teeth. I have to. <laughs> it's beyond the point of being realistic praise. That's how you know someone's a, a fan. That's how you know you've gone into the realm of hero worship. Like, if you were to say that about Arnold, like, I met Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't agree with his policies. Certainly not anymore, but the guy was jacked. Okay, The Rock, sure. But to compliment Trudeau on his muscular physique, he's a woman without breasts, or I would even venture to say very small one. Here, look. He's not, look, dripping with lean mass. I can hardly get my arms around you, big bear. What is Ooh, down by a jab. To be fair, he did win one of those fights. Oh, good. Because the other guy got exhausted kicking his ass. Uh. <laughs> That was the best of Good strategy. <laughs> they did the Homer Simpson defense. Now, contrast this hero worship of totalitarian anti-free speechers uh, with, with the once darlings of liberaldom. I don't even want to say the left, but like Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce. Liberals love Lenny Bruce, who stood trial for offensive speech. Comedians like Bill Hicks or the Johnny Carsons of the world who saw themselves as liberal. But I, I don't know. I can't imagine that they would align themselves with people like this today. No. Can you? No. I can't imagine, I mean, it's just like, he's selling out other comedians, he's closing the door behind him. Like, there's like those people in the internment camps, like, yeah, the Jews are upstairs. <laughs> so long as Himmler has some awesome weed. <laughs> <laughs>
And this, I don't know about you, this trend really bothers me more than any other because we kind of, we expect the media yep. to be sort of leftist complicit. We've, we've sort of conceded academia and for the most part Hollywood, but the realm specifically of comedy, it was always supposed to be the last bastion of free speech, that final frontier where there were no gatekeepers and you could experiment with your words. That's really what it is. A, a comedian, their only tool, their instrument are their words. words. We've had both left and right leaning comedians before. Never, ever, ever, ever in the history of comedy have we had a battalion of comics looking to actively endorse and support political candidates whose main cause, arguably their main cause, is the forcible removal of free speech from the masses. And even worse, even worse than all of this, it just makes comedy not fun. Yeah. Comedy's really starting to suck. It just sucks. <laughs> you know, I, I always find it funny that African Americans, you know, are a little different, largely due to cultural and social circumstance, but are actually in no way different or inferior and or superior in any way to their Caucasian and or Asian counterparts. And I would like to conclude this set this evening by holding hands and singing We Are the World. Mm. Hey, did you like this video? It, what, you didn't? Oh, you're a cat person? Well, that makes sense. Disregard him and or her slash Z. Everyone else, hit the subscribe button and leave your comment below as to why you like this video. I, you know what, crazy cat, you can get back, you can, you can comment below too as to why you don't like it.